Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana. I'm coming to you from SellerCon here in Las Vegas, an e-commerce event hosted by The Amazing Selling Machine. And I have a very special guest here, Adalberto, who is from Mexico, lives in Seattle right now, and he is an Amazon seller. He actually uh, discovered selling on Amazon through a video interview that my fiance Stefan and I did a few years ago, and was inspired to start this Amazon business, and uh, invested in The Amazing Selling Machine, and here he is today uh, in six months does over a quarter of a million dollars in sales fifty thousand dollars a month doing extremely well so thank you so much for being here really appreciate you taking thank you, the time. for having me here yes and so I want to share with people mm -hmm. your story because you are such an inspiration and you know it wasn't too long ago that you were on the other side of the camera you know on your computer mm -hmm. watching a video interview yes. and now here you are the one being interviewed so maybe take us back a little bit on what was your mindset going into this business did you have reservations hesitations because mm -hmm. a lot of people who see our videos they're very skeptical they are very unsure about mm -hmm. you know whether or not to to go yeah. through with it I mean, whenever something, you know, you're, you're skeptical, probably there's something good about it. I mean, you know, obviously I, I know because uh, in Seattle, you know, Amazon is from Seattle. I have a lot of friends kind of like that work there. I, I know the growth that Amazon has, you know, have over the years. And, you know, we are basically like in Seattle, we are like big consumers of Amazon. So I, so I know that people like love to shop in Amazon. I just didn't know that, you know, you can become a seller. Mm -hmm. And actually, well, I, can, I, I knew they can be a seller, but I didn't know you can use their fulfillment. Mm -hmm. to actually distribute the your the FBA to mm -hmm. distribute the products. I thought like maybe like Prime was exclusive, sort of like Amazon selling those products and maybe you you are were like second kind of like category. Mm -hmm. But I know that you can be like you know first class on Amazon, you know, selling uh, you know basically like uh, through your own business, you know, using their platform. Right. So right. that's something that uh, I was like, uh huh. So I uh, is I found a way to like you know build a scalable you know uh, e-commerce business, and I said like okay you know then I also like you know found you know like. Uh, when Stefan was interviewing you, so your background, you're coming, you know, like very young age, you know. Yeah, no experience. No experience, and yeah. I said, you know, like this has, you know, can have some potential. So, and I always kind of had the mindset of, you know, trying these things out because I said, like, you know, what if I miss it, right? I mean, I try different business opportunities, but I mean, I, I like when I see something, you know, that it has the, the potential scale, you know, uh, you can get into that, you know, like right now, basically, you don't have to wait, like, yeah. Sometimes yeah. so. Yeah, and you were coming from mm -hmm. a background in engineering, engineering, I believe. Software engineering, yeah. Right. So very different than e-commerce, but mm -hmm. you were willing to learn. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, is I mean, we know how to build kind of websites, but I mean, I mean, I, I want the experience also to know how to sell. Yeah, the marketing. The marketing, mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. I mean, always kind of for me, I was always passionate to to build my own business, mm -hmm. uh, have control of basically of uh, you know how much you know, the work that I can put in basically and uh, like sort of like having, you know, control of your income, you know, or like over time you keep keep building and it, it keeps growing. So it's kind of like exciting. And, and also like there are things like you can get like, uh, I mean, later you can sell your business. I mean, you can keep, try to make it uh, reduce the uh, overhead and try to automate as much as possible, you know, mm -hmm. so have more freedom basically to, right, right. to, you know, like let's say you want to travel more and or you have to have, you know, the, I don't know, the, what is it, the laptop, laptop lifestyle. lifestyle yes. <laughs> so you, you have you have you actually uh, you have more responsibilities than, than when you have a job basically because mm -hmm. obviously like things go wrong I mean they depend on you basically yeah. so, so it's so I mean it comes with that, that I mean also that extra responsibility uh, but I mean you I guess follow you know and build a system uh, and then uh, then you and also like you know build a team so you can you can free up yourself you know and uh, and have more flexibility so I actually I always kind of like that. Uh, like to pursue yeah, the pursuit of you know, so freedom. So that's what really intrigued you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then what happened? So you saw our interview, mm -hmm. and then what happened after that? Did you decide immediately that you wanted to start this business, or you still weren't sure? Or yeah. you, I understand you maybe put a team in place, or ha what happened after that? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, so after I saw the video, you know, I, I tried to find other videos mm -hmm. just, just to learn more, obviously. And then I found another video where, uh, not really it was the same one, another one that recommended, you know, the ASM training. To learn, you know, like the kind of step by step. I mean, from sourcing to you know marketing, so like and everything in between. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. I mean, to put the because I didn't have the experience. I mean, yet. So and my team here. So, so I said, like, why? When do we all kind of like you know watch the the training mm -hmm. and try to implement it? You know, at the same time. So I got I got a team with like I guess different like skill set, and I said, like, okay, you know, we'll you know we we'll, we'll watch you know one model every week and try to implement it. Mm -hmm. A team, as in like you, business partners yeah, or people uh, that you hired. Yeah, actually, it was it was a team. It was hired by another business that I have. Mm. When I transitioned to this this project, I mean, they were doing more. They were more like you know like um, contractors, but it, actually they are from 
Mexico and Colombia. Mm. So they were helping you kind of understand the business and put things together and implement what you were learning in the yeah. ASM course. Yeah, yeah. It was a little bit hard at the beginning because, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I maybe should take more time myself, you know, to, to get into some step, maybe get a little bit ahead, basically, to, mm. uh, because at the beginning, you know, we are all like, I mean, obviously, I mean, having a team at the beginning, but I mean, you still had, you had to pay them, right? I mean, yeah. And it, which is, I mean, no, but I mean, like, then you don't know still, like, I mean, you're, you're, you cannot, like, let's say, split task or, or do, like, uh, mm -hmm. because you still are learning, so you're saying, like, okay, so, so maybe that, uh, if I step back, you know, I, I mean, I still put a team together, but maybe I'll, I'll put, you know, like, uh, at different points of the process, basically, when, when, as, as I need, you know, like. Yeah, because in the beginning, mm -hmm. if, you know, you're just learning the process yourself, you yeah. can't really delegate things to your team. You can't exactly. tell them, like, okay, you do this, you do this, because at the beginning, you really don't necessarily need a team. You just need to learn things. Exactly. And there's only so much you can do in the beginning. It's just finding a product, doing research, and yeah. finding a supplier, and you don't really need other people to do that for you. In fact, you should be doing it yourself, right? Because it's yeah. the product that exactly. you want to. Yeah, that's, that's what I found, you know, eventually, you know, a lot of these things, you know, you know, you have to do it myself. I mean, maybe they will help me a little bit. Maybe we'll try to, instead of finding one product, we'll try to find three products at a time, you know. But at some point, you know, like the business is almost, is demanding you, like, you, that you need more, more people at some point, basically. But at the beginning, you know, you can start on your own with, like, and maybe try to, like, invest that, that capital in, into inventory, mm -hmm. right? Like samples, inventory, like, yeah. you know, yeah. try, and, you know, at some point, there is a point when you actually have to launch your first product where you maybe need, like, photography, you know, copywriting, and mm -hmm. that's where maybe you, when you can actually start, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, contacting other people. I mean, I, I think it's, it's always good that you do everything, you know, like, the first time, just to... Yeah, just so you have maybe, a basic maybe, foundation. I mean, maybe at least you don't have maybe the photography equipment or everything like that, maybe yeah, you, yeah. you get some help, but at least uh, there, are, there are things that are, that is a, like, a must-do, basically, for, mm -hmm. for you to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, like, obviously, you need to have the relationship with the, class, the, the supplier, yeah, yeah, right, and, yeah. and understanding your audience, and, mm -hmm. and then there are other things that you can delegate that are people that are know how to do that better than you. Mm -hmm. right. So so once um, you took the course and then mm -hmm. you were just following the training yeah. step by step and then you were told to p find, you know, find a list of 10 products. Mm -hmm. And um, how is the product research phase for you? Because a lot of people struggle with this part. It's yes. very beginning, but they, they get so caught up in, oh, which product should I pick? I don't know, and the fear of choosing the wrong product. And so what was that process like for you choosing the first product? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not easy, I mean, because, I mean, you have to, you have to be very patient, I mean, going through, like, a lot of, like, data, you know, a lot of uh, products. I mean, what we did in the team, you know, we split it, like, okay, like, in, like, different, you know, like, everybody will try to call different niches that actually they were maybe more relatable to them. Uh, so kind of, like, let's say, we have, like, you know, like, maybe a woman in my team, I mean, we'll take, you know, like, beauty and some uh, products, I mean, someone else, maybe, like, that have, like, pets, you know, we'll go into pets, and we'll try to do, you know, research in, in our kind of like areas of strength mm -hmm. and but yeah I mean it's still I mean it's a, it, it, it takes some time I mean like you can find a product that is under the the parameters basically that like ASM you know like I mean it's it's and there's no compet not much competition but I mean now it's it's harder and harder to get to find those spots so, and sometimes I mean like let's say you what well, you cannot find you know, maybe it's like when you are like the first I mean I'm not saying exactly like that there's nothing exactly like that but I mean maybe like the first with a variation maybe there's nothing like that and then you're like the, the first one like trying that out so mm -hmm. There's not much data there, so. so. So that's something that you did is you kind of um, thought, okay, what is everyone doing? And, and mm. let me do the opposite. <laughs> let me let yeah. me be the one that's doing something different. And so what you did was you um, didn't look for an inexpensive product to source. You looked for one of the most expensive products yeah. to source. And so you're doing so well and, you know, $50,000 a month is a lot, but you're not selling that many products mm -hmm. because yeah. the product that you sell is high ticket. And yeah. so it's about $2,000. Mm -hmm. That's how much yes. you sell for. Yeah, and, and, and you know, it, that was, that was definitely not the first product that I picked, you know. It mm -hmm. took me a while, actually, after I tested different products that I said, okay, you know what, uh, I think everybody's, like, kind of, like, you know, doing the same because I can see, like, competition coming really quick, you know, on this area. So let me think back and reflect. I mean, okay, I'll, I'll try to loosen up this, you know, the, the constraints and actually go to something, you know, like outside of the mm -hmm. range. Mm -hmm. And I actually, like, uh, one product that I'm, for example, I, I, that I actually, like, I started selling on, on that, you know, the first one, was basically like on, on the, uh, kind of like a standing desk basically. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is, uh, that's, that's the first one I mean that I get, got outside, but, but the problem with that product, I mean, it was like, uh, there was a lot of like good position in kind of like sellers. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, okay, so I, I went and kind of like, you know, even like lose up the, uh, and went up to find a more, more expensive product. So then I found a product that I, that I, it's a complex product, but I actually understand because it comes from a 
I know how to basically like, uh, I built into a similar product when I was back in college. Mm. So, so you had an understanding. So I have an understanding of the product, you know, and you know how to fix it, how to like, uh, mm. uh, if there is a problem, or how to, you know, like diagnose it. I mean, mm. so, so that was a more relatable product to, to me. So that's why I was comfortable to go, let's say, outside of uh, right, right, because right. I, I said, okay, I have some confidence that I, I, I know this kind of products. So, so this product that you found, um, it was higher ticket, so yeah. definitely more expensive. And sometimes we have this idea that people who shop on Amazon, they kind of they don't want to spend a lot of money; they want to get yeah. the best deal. But sometimes people shop on Amazon for pure convenience, so they yes. will spend more for a product that is higher ticket, mm -hmm. just because they have fast delivery. You know, maybe Prime shipping. Yeah. Um, they trust Amazon. So the yeah. product that you found when you were doing your research was there a lot of demand for it and low competition, or how did you decide on that product? Yeah, it was kind of more like um, low competition, but in medium demand. Basically. So I said like you know there is there is an opportunity for for I mean someone else to kind of you know. Mm -hmm. When just and, and looking at your competitors, you didn't see a lot. Of yeah, like when I look at my competitors, I, I, I see like them, for example, not taking advantage of like, you know, selling through FBA. Oh. Uh, I mean, I, they were not doing maybe like a lot of marketing, a lot of PPC. Yeah. I mean, so I, I found like some things that I, you know, because I already launched a product, so I, so I had to be more competitive, you know, like of, uh, on the other products. So I see, in this one, I saw like it was very loose, you know, it was okay, like, no one is actually like, you know, you know, like uh, using all the techniques available, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, to position yourself. So I said, like, okay, um, let me try that out. And my, my first surprise, you know, was that when, as I put it, you know, like, uh, like in the first kind of few weeks, it, it actually started selling on its own. I, I haven't even, even started like my marketing kind of oh, like uh, on, on Facebook or any other traffic yeah. source, it, yeah. like on its own. So, so I, I was, that was a, a good relief. So I said, like, okay, that, that's good. Uh, Later on, you know, I got a lot of returns because I mean, there was a defect, but, mm -hmm. but I was able to find the defect and fix it on the next order and, okay. and then, you know, yeah. like yeah. repair, you know, that uh, yeah. initial phase. Uh, so sometimes, um, like what you're describing, it seems like the product that you had, like when you see listings of products that mm -hmm. there's some demand there, but the listings are not optimized, mm -hmm. oftentimes these are the manufacturers directly listing the product yeah. on Amazon. So mm -hmm. if it's from China, these Chinese manufacturers listing the product directly on Amazon and they don't care care or know how to optimize. They just yeah. put the product up there and hope it sells. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good opportunity for people who you have training, like you took the yes. ASM course, to go in and fully optimize that because you really don't have competition. Yeah. So it's very niche and it's mm -hmm. a very, you know, you're not going to get as many sales, but when someone searches for that product, mm -hmm. you're sure to be the one who they're going to buy from because exactly. you have a way more optimized listing. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I mean, that you put all, all the skills that you learn from, from the training and uh, like you find that, that opportunity, you can clearly see because you have been through training, so you can recognize, I mean, this is like an optimized listing. This is, they are not using all the, yeah. the features of the platform. So, mm -hmm. so let me, I mean, if I put all the work there, basically. And right now, for example, something that I know that in this market is not building kind of like, a, like using influencers or building kind of like the audience, basically outside, like promoting this product outside of Amazon. I see that it's not like, like very strong, basically. So, mm -hmm. so maybe something that I, I will continue to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Like you know, build my brand around right. these products, you know, right, right, right. and keep using you know like what I'm learning here in the in the seller con. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so and so, what happened when you had all those returns? Because it is a high ticket item. So to get a return, yeah, yeah. like did Amazon dispose of it, or were you able to resell it, or how did that yeah, impact no, you? Yeah, I basically like uh, I configure Amazon to send the, the products back to me because obviously I want to your house. I, I want to inspect them and yeah. see to see what happened, and yeah, to my home. And then so I, I noticed you know couple of problems came and I said like, okay, the same problem basically. And, and, and it was a very simple problem basically. I think it was just like, and I actually I inspected one unit myself and actually I asked my manufacturer to, you know, like to, to check it out. But I think, you know, like I, I think it was bad luck because I took one unit that actually was good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then maybe like half of them and they have a, like, I mean, it was a small kind of like assembly uh, mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. um, but that make the product like unusable for a seller. I mean, if they don't have like a, a special tool. Hmm. So when you imported, you got your inventory from China. Yeah. Did you have a third party inspection yeah. or? I think the first time I, I didn't, so that I learned my lesson. So for the uh -huh. so next time, you know, it's actually like, you should always do the, uh, there, there's, in, like when you uh, buy through Alibaba, there is a third party inspection called, yes. like two, two companies that do third party inspection. I mean, you should always do that because it's not very expensive. And then yeah. kind of like, once your product is, you know, comes, you know, to the United States, it's hardly impossible, I mean, to actually like send it back to China for, for repairs, right? Uh, because I mean, the, I mean, the cost of sending that back and then mm -hmm. yeah. bring it back, I mean, it's, 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 just, it's just very expensive. So it's better to put everything that you can, you know, to make sure the quality is good. 
and also protect, you know, like the, the packaging has to be good. I mean, so also like we're, we ask the manufacturer to improve the packaging to, in case that, you know, the product gets kind of like, you know, because I mean, obviously the packaging companies are rough, silly with the products. Mm -hmm. So it has to be, it has to have good packaging. Yeah, so that's a valuable lesson for you yeah. guys to make sure that, you know, once you, when you don't have a relationship with a supplier and you supplier, it's important to hire a third party inspection agency to verify that the goods are in good condition because sometimes, you know, you know, the manufacturers, maybe they can be a little bit dishonest, the quality of the products aren't as good as the samples they sent you, or there's damage or broken. So it's important to do the inspection. And once you develop a relationship with your supplier, you can then trust them that they're going to send you the goods. Um, I have another video about this. I'll link the description for you guys. So your, your product, because it is selling at such a high ticket, $2,000, I would expect that the cost to manufacture is also significantly higher. Mm -hmm. So was that something that was troublesome for you to have you know, a high, MO, uh, high inventory cost for your initial order? Yeah, for, for me, I mean, it was still I mean, because I negotiated a low MOQ. Mm -hmm. So I was still to you know, have an order, you know, like the order amount was still under a reasonable like 10,000, you know, from my, for that order. So, so MOQ is minimum order quantity mm -hmm. for those that don't know. And mm -hmm. so you were able to have only 10 units as your first order. Yes. So that's, that's great. Cause a lot of um, times um, manufacturers, they want you to order, you know, 500 units, a thousand mm -hmm. units. Yes. Um, so it's good when you can negotiate to have exactly. a lower MOQ, especially for something as high ticket as yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that otherwise, I mean, it was going to be, Extremely difficult if I had to purchase, you know, let's say a hundred. I mean, that would be a hundred thousand dollars. So, yeah, that would so be crazy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I always try to. Uh, I mean, try try to. I mean, talk to the to the supplier. Obviously, you have. To, I mean, you are in the long term basically, so they have to know that basically that you're you're trying to find a good product basically. But I mean, you you can ask for, uh, to get a quote, for example, for like, let's say, uh, in my case, you know, like if it's a thousand dollar unit, maybe you can say like, okay, for fifty units. But also give me, you know, how much is for like one sample and for like ten units. Mm. So get all this, all the squads. So they know that you're looking mm -hmm. to buy more, basically, but you want to test first, mm -hmm. and maybe they can do something, you know, like and help you, like mm -hmm. send send you like one sample, uh, yeah. or like, or, you know, like or a small MOQ, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any tips for our viewers, for those mm -hmm. who are watching this video and they, they want to start an e-commerce business yeah. because it, it does resonate with them. They like the idea of building, mm -hmm. you know, a product and, and having something tangible like that, but they're still on the fence about it. Do you have any, um, you know, words of advice or yeah. anything that you'd like to share with our viewers? Yeah, yeah I mean, usually, I mean, you're like a little bit, you know, uh, I mean, you're, you're not uh, willing to start. I mean, usually, I mean, it's, it's sometimes because, I mean, like, you know, you feel the risk, and it's usually because, I mean, it goes back to maybe some lack of skills, some lack of, uh, you know, like experience or connections. So usually it's, you feel about something that you maybe don't have in the moment. Mm. So I guess, you know, try to find, you know, what is like you're lacking. For example, like in my position, you know, like I would say, you know, uh, you know I have some capital to invest in products. Not everybody has like, mm -hmm. uh, like capital to invest, you know. So, so if that's one of the, I mean, work on that, that, that problem, I say, like maybe, mm. you know, try to save up to maybe like get samples. And then try to maybe build connections with other people that that have have money to invest, or they want maybe they have they have money but they don't know where to put it. Mm. <laughs> so so if if it, if only so your problem, you know, try to work that out. If, and for example, like for me, another problem for me, you know, was like this: I'm not a market, I'm not a marketer, right? So marketing is not in my expertise. So so definitely something. I mean, I have to learn the skill. You know, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that's the thing. It's like a lot of us we don't know these things before yeah. we start, but we have to be willing to learn. You know, I didn't yeah. know how to do email marketing. I didn't know mm -hmm. how to do social media marketing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do uh, any of the stuff that I'm doing now. Yeah. But you have to have the willingness to learn. Yeah, and that's why I mean, it's it's uh, it's very important to get a team uh, to try to uh, because I mean, you can leverage different expertise, you know, for different things. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that's a, that's a very important thing. I mean, like uh, maybe like I'm not. I'm not a photographer, for example, but you need really nice pictures for your products to sell well or, or videos. So you need to get, a, I mean, maybe a friend basically that, that's passionate about photography, you know, mm -hmm. get, their, get their help uh, or, you know, like, or actually now Amazon has a, I think you can pay like $50 to get your professional pictures. I mean, or, or maybe your supplier can do it in China, basically. I mean, try to find, you know. Yeah, get resourceful. Get, get resourceful, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. It, yeah, basically, whatever is your problem, basically, that is kind of like setting you like mm -hmm. back. I mean, try to see, I mean, if it is like, you know, I try, try to solve that, that first, basically, and then. Uh, Great, yeah. yeah. And keep moving, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, I, I can, right now, I still, I mean, even though I, I've been a little bit over a year on this business, I still see that I have lack of certain kind of skills and, and things that I, I have not, I don't have experience. 
but I mean, it's normal, basically. So I just keep, you know, uh, looking after people that have the skills that, I, that can complement mine. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can't expect to, to do it all yourself. Yep. And, you know, you might be great at one thing or a few things. And mm -hmm. focusing on that is going to be much more advantageous to you than to spread yourself thin and trying to do everything yourself. So yeah. it's important to know what to outsource, when to delegate, and, and to be able to do that and not hold on to all the control. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we can be, mm -hmm. I know I've been in that, that place before where I'm a little bit of a control freak mm -hmm. and I want to do it all myself. But that's only going to get you so far. Yeah, you get, I mean, you get drained, I mean, the energy because, I mean, there are so many things that you have to do. And for some of I also like, con, you know, like, you know, my, my job that has responsibilities, so I will not be able to, you know, like, mm. move forward. I mean, it will take me a long time to actually be able to do. You were also working at your job? I work, I still working at my job. Oh, yeah. you're still working? Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. For you. So, and, and uh, part of the reason is because, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, when, when you invest, I mean, you use all these people's money, basically. So, mm -hmm. I want to get to a point I feel comfortable. I mean, like, okay, I can you know, pay that back, basically, like, and, and also, like, you know, I want to, I mean, my, my, you know, the product that I'm selling, you know, it's, I think it's still, like, how to basically, for example, like, do, like, trademark uh, for my products, that will give you a, a kind of extra level of protection, because I know when you don't have the trademark, uh, you know, you know, on the brand, you know, mm -hmm. there's more risk, basically, of, uh, like, other people, like, using your listings, or they're, like, uh, or maybe the manufacturer, basically, they, they don't want to kind of work with your name. I know, it can be, like, many, uh, you don't have con much control, right? Mm -hmm. So, what I, my, my goal is to have a more, like stable kind of business, something more, you know, mm -hmm. like stronger basically foundation. Yeah, yeah, something more sustainable. Sustainable, yeah. because I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're making, like say, you're, you're making the, the income basically that you want, but I mean, if it is not very stable, like, you know, very strong, I mean, it can fall in like a few months. Right? Yeah, yeah, so. and that's the difference between just launching products and actually yeah. building a brand. Exactly. Because when you build a brand, you have something that is, uh, yeah, just much more sustainable yeah. than just a product that is selling really well, but maybe a couple months from now it's not selling so yeah. well. And when you have a brand, you have something that you can take off of Amazon, yeah. not just rely on Amazon and build a Parthenon and really exactly. grow. Yeah, and another reason I, I keep in my job because, you know, because it's a high, high ticket product, you know, I had to, once the product started like selling, I had to invest a lot of in inventory. Yeah. So I want to, you know, like, you know, like, even though I got part of that finance, I want to, you know, pay that back, basically don't have like any, like loans and. Yeah, I think that's yeah. important. A lot of people think that yeah. they have to quit their job to start this business, but mm -hmm. I actually recommend not doing that because yes. if you really want to have the money to invest in this business, to mm -hmm. grow it, yeah. uh, you need to have the funds and you need <laughs> to get that from somewhere. And yeah. even if your business is making money, um, it's good to reinvest that money back into yes. the business to really grow it. And then at least you can pay yourself and sustain your lifestyle with the, the money that you're making from your job. Yeah, uh, yeah. at the beginning when you're building your brand, you know, sometimes, I mean, you need to put more money that when you take out, can you take out of the business, right? Because you, you know, you had to pay, you know, for like trademark registration, you know, like nice pictures, videos, I mean, video editing, like there's a lot of things that you had to invest. So, I mean, if you're very like, I mean, you, I mean, you want to take only like the profits from your business, it's going to take a lot of time maybe like, so sometimes you have to put resources out of your, mm -hmm. your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. to, to speed it up, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so it's okay. I mean, it's good to have, you know, like uh, a steady income, also like to be, I mean, at least you have some peace of mind and you can take some of the resources, I mean, basically to keep living your normal life, basically, and put a little bit of that into investment, mm -hmm. right? So it's, I, I also don't recommend, like, people to quit their jobs until, like, you know, they, they have tested their business for, yeah. I would say, at least a minimum, like, a couple of years, you know? That yeah, is, consistency, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can see, like, month after month, I mean, you, yeah. I mean, there's consistency, I mean, you have predictable sales, yeah. uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's very important, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here thank today, you, being an inspiration, sharing your story with our viewers. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Thank and you. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this interview because uh, I know that he is going to be such an inspiration for those of you who are just starting your business. You know, you're seeing interviews like this and uh, you're not sure. And, and, you know, you were in that position a couple of years ago as well, you know, just watching interviews on YouTube and, and look how successful mm -hmm. you are today. And you're going to continue to grow and scale your business. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and comment below if you do have any questions. I'd love to answer them for you and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.